Hey there guys, it's the Shiny Furfro here, bringing you another day of Rated Battle Spot Doubles with my Trick Room team. We have Mega Morwal Setsuna. Probably should say the nickname first. Uh, Mega Morwal the Setsuna, yeah! <laughs> So it's sooner the Mega Morwile, who has Rock Slide instead of Iron Head uh, to help deal with. Uh, basically, it helps me flinch things, um, helps me deal with Charizards, uh, Charizard Wise especially. Uh, we have Feist, the Aromatisse with the Aroma Veil to prevent any Encore Taunt shenanigans. We have Suki, the offensive Cresselia, who can also set up Trick Room, uh, Feist and Suki being my setters. We have Gumdrop, who is basically there to. Halt any water types like Suicune, Rotom Wash, um, Swampert, Azumarill, that sort of thing. Uh, they tend to lose one-on-one -on -one unless they have another move they can use, especially if they trigger my ability in Storm Drain. We have Faye, the Pixie Plate um, Sylveon. Build, the build for Faye is uh, a build that Cybertron inspired, is quite similar to his, slightly different. Links to all the videos necessary in the description below. And Harriet. The fake out Hariyama, um, who is oh my god, so bulky. She needed a fire blast from Mega Charizard Y, and she wasn't even at full health. So I'm really loving the build I've got on my Hariyama right now. She's not even like, th does Hariyama get thick fat? I feel like it does. I'm not thick fat, I'm guts. So the bulk is real. We're gonna go right into today, guys. We, we had two wins yesterday. Unfortunately, the second win did not put us in 1700 like I thought it would. We are just one point away. So, so very mean, Battle Spot. Like, oh, no, you're one point away. Yeah. So hopefully we can uh, win today against a ja Japanese player in Iwate, I believe that was. And they're bringing the Breloom. That's the first thing that sticks out to me, the Breloom. I do not like that at all. We have Breloom, Kangaskhan, Heatran, Zapdos, Cresselia, and Landorus Therian Form. So... Aromatisse is definitely a lead I want to bring because that Breloom can spore and Aromatisse has Lumberry. The reason for that is that she can set up a Trick Room uh, without being put to sleep and then can go for a Misty Terrain the next turn to prevent uh, further sleeps. Uh, I kind of want to lead Aromatisse Hariyama. That's the lead that I'm leaning towards. Um, the only threat to that would be Kangaskhan faking out, in which case I would just close combat that slot, expecting it to fake out the Aromatis. The lead I'm expecting here is actually going to be Kangaskhan Breloom uh, for the Spore fake out onto Aromatis. That's that's the lead I'm predicting. Um, worst case scenario, Cresselia's a lead, and I can't get an Oko on something. That's the absolute worst case scenario in my mind. Because I can deal super effective damage to everything other than, well, uh, yeah, Hariyama does super effective, super effective damage to everything. Now then, uh, Sylveon just seems good. It re she really does. But Gastrodon needs to come to deal with the Heatran as a more direct counter, because if I lose Hariyama, I lose my way of dealing with Heatran. And I kind of have to bring my Morwa, so I'm not bringing a lot of spread damage. I'm also bringing a lot of physical attackers, so gotta watch out for burns. Um... Heatran not really known for carrying Will-O-Wisp, but there's a move it can learn. Also, Heat Wave has that burn chance, so we have to watch out for that. Pressuring a challenge. Oh, I think it's going to be one. As he leads with that not Kangaskhan. Oh, okay. Okay, so we have... Um... I'm assuming Spore on the Aromatisse is what's going to happen here, so I'm going to go for the Ice Punch onto the uh, Landorus. I'm not too worried about the Intimidate right now because two Ice Punches should two Ice Punches should still KO it. So Trick Room and Ice Punch. I'm expecting him to predict a Fake Out, obviously. So, or should I Fake Out? No, I don't think I should. I don't th I'm, I'm going to go right for that Ice Punch and punish that. Um, that Lando if it wants to stay in. Could I go for the fake out onto the Breloom just to prevent uh, Spore entirely? Which, in hindsight, might have been a better play. Also break in its Focus Sash, but it will die in the next turn. It would be forced to go for Muck Punch. Um, but I, I, I really think the Lander is going to be a bigger issue, so getting some damage on that early in the game would be a big benefit. Uh, obviously, he, uh, Heatran being the biggest threat to my team, but Landorus 
It's not a problem because he can shuffle around with intimidates. And my opponent's really taking his time here. As he goes for the rock slide, Aromatis completely evades the attack, gracefully dodging it. Uh, and we're probably going to see the Spore Bullet Seed. Now that's an interesting one onto the Hurry Armor. So just giving me a free trick room there. Uh, doing a lot of damage with that Bullet Seed as well. Oh my goodness, are you kidding? And to finish her off a critical hit. I'm in trouble. Big trouble. Like, the trouble I am in could not be bigger. Um, the uh, Black Bullet Seed roll getting... I think that was four Bullet Seeds, and I would have lived that last one on a sliver of health, I believe. That critical hit on that last one might have just cost me the match turn one. Should have gone for that fake out onto that balloon. I am really kicking myself now. I will be able to get an Intimidate off. Um, can't actually gauge what the item is on the Landorus, unfortunately. Um, it could, it might not be Choice Scarf. That's the thing I have to keep in mind. Uh, definitely didn't look like it was Choice Bad Damage. Now, Salt Vest Lando is getting more common. I don't think he can care more while in one hit with an Earthquake, especially Spread Damage. I don't think he'd even go for it with Bloom on the field. He'd risk breaking his own Sash at that point. So I'm, I actually feel quite safe going for Rock Slide here. As he actually withdraws, so that's, that's great. Uh, as we see Heatran coming in. Okay. So did he protect on the Bloom? That's the question. If he protects on Bloom, then um, I will be in big trouble. And I think my loss is practically insured at that point. He goes for the Monk Punch on the Morwell to get some damage off. That's not going to do anything at minus one, and that should be a dead Breloom. Um, it is Focus Sash, so as long as I connect with my uh, Rock Slide. Uh, Heatran, oh, the double avoid. I do believe the RNG uh, does not like me today, guys. I, I believe my the RNG uh, is completely 100% against me in every way, shape, and form, and I am now forced to switch in uh, Gumdrop here to take the Heat Wave. Uh, he might predict my switch and go for the Bullet Seed. That won't help him at all. He might go for Mac Punch here, as he actually chooses to withdraw uh, into the Landorus, trying to shuffle in with the Intimidates. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to oh good, I'm going to completely ignore. The, um, should I ignore the Heatran? The lower is special, that's going to help me a lot, isn't it, guys? Goes for the Heat Wave, does connect. Uh, does not do anywhere near enough damage to be a major threat to me. Now then, what is my, oh yeah. He has to switch Heatran out. I'm Moonblasting that Heatran slot, I'm going for the Ice Beam onto the Landorus. If he leaves it in... Worst case scenario, he leaves it in and doesn't protect. But I think he's going to protect as he actually switches the Landorus out into the Kangaskhan. And he does protect on the Heatran, so that, that much I did predict. So, um, yeah, that's that's a thing. Now, I am put in a position where I can just scald the Heatran slot, no problems. The question is, who's going to fake out? I think he's going to fake out Gastrodon here, isn't he? That's the most likely play. Uh, I'm going to set up a Misty Terrain here. Because my Trick Room is going to end soon, which means that Balloon can come in and Spore. And I want to prevent that. I am going to go for the Scald onto that slot, uh, in case he does not fake out my Gastro. That's his best play, faking out the Gastrodon and Heat Waving, I assume. Or if he has... Flash Cannon, not many of them do. Uh, goes for the Fake Out on to the Aromatis. I don't agree with that at all. I'm going to get a KO on that Heatran. That's a I think that should be a dead Heatran. No, it does live. I should have gone for the Helping Hand there, shouldn't I? As he goes with the Substitute. Now that's an interesting play. There goes my Trick Room. I wasn't able to get up my thing there. I'm going to go for another Misty Terrain. I th mm, no, I'm not. I'm going to... Helping? No. I'm going to Trick Room. I'm going to Trick Room. And I'm, go I'm going to break that sub on the Heat Train, I believe. You might protect. 
If he protects, he can KO Aromatis with Return. Okay, you know what? I'm going to go for the Helping Hand onto Gashadon and the Scald onto the Kangaskhan. Worst case scenario, it doesn't die. Best case scenario, it dies. Mid case scenario, it doesn't die, but gets burned. I really think the Heatran's going to protect to conserve that uh, sub. It wastes a lot of health to get that substitute. Helping Hand does go first. Double Edge! Into the Gastrodon! No! And the critical hit! That obviously did not matter, judging by the damage it did. That would have KO'd either way. Oh, gosh. I misplayed that horribly. I live on four, though. So I got that going for me, which is nice. <laughs> uh, good game to my opponent. There's, there's no way I can come back from this. I should have gone for the uh, Trick Room. Should have gone for Trick Room, Protect, Protect, but I was really, really expecting him to want the Aromatisse dead. Because once Trick Room was back up, I could, uh, I could come back. Gonna suck a punch to Kang, and... which he withdraws, so... It doesn't even matter, this guy is in my mind... to get off the Intimidate, which obviously isn't gonna matter. So yeah, no no avoids either. Oh dear, the um the bullet seed hitting me four times and that crit at the end put me in a very very bad position. And the double miss on the rock slide. Oh boy, that double miss in that rock slide. I'm not sure how much how much of a difference it would have made. It would have made a big difference. I have I have used rock slide on Heatran before, and even bulky Heatran takes a lot of damage from more rock slide. Scald would have scald would have KO'd it if I hit that rock if I hit that rock slide. Oh, it's hard to not be uh, frustrated at that. My opponent obviously played to the best of his abilities, not giving me a single second to breathe. So the RNG obviously didn't help either. We are going to continue battling. Going to get our second battle in for the day. Oh dear, so I think we're going back down. Yep, 1680. This seems to be the uh, the rank, the rating I just kind of hover at. Uh, my big, my, my biggest problem on Raider Battle Spot is predicting what kind of opponent I'm facing. When I think I'm facing someone who I suppose not knows what they're doing, it's hard to explain. Like someone who won't take incredibly crazy risks, and I predict they're not going to do that. They do it. When I predict them to be someone who does take crazy risks, they don't, and I end up paying for it every time. Um, that Roselia is the first thing that came out to me. Uh, the Chandelure is the second thing that pops out, and the Mega Ordino. My goodness. Uh, I really want to see what Mega Ordino can do. Gastrodon, while it does deal with the majority of this team, he's got two things that deal with it in the, um, the Roserade. Obviously, stab grass and chandelures do carry energy ball. At least from my experience, uh, I know I definitely carry one on mine. So I'm gonna keep Gumdrop in the back in this battle, and I want to lead with Hariyama and Cresselia, maybe. Uh, worst case scenario leads with Greninja, Chandelure, Dark Pulse, Sh Shadow Balls, the KO. That's the absolute worst case scenario. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Gashadon in the back, definitely needed. And more while. Well, she doesn't have Iron Head to deal with Mega Ordino. Rock Slide deals with a lot of this team. It does, but my gut saying Sylveon. My gut saying Sylveon. I'm listening to my gut. I'm not bringing Mega More while. I don't know if you guys might have noticed a lot of games, most of the games I lose are the games that don't bring Mega More well. But this time my gut is just screaming, BRING THE SYLVEON! So I'm bringing the Sylveon. Uh, main, big, biggest problem is it gives me a weakness to poison. That lead, okay. Mm. I'm okay with this lead. Completely okay with this lead. Worst case scenario, Sleep Powder's Cresselia. I'm faking it out then. 
opening up a trick room. Uh, just, I don't believe Chandelure has access to Taunt. But if it does, it doesn't really matter because I do have the mental herbal microcellia. I did a lot of damage. Does go for the Shadow Ball, I'm assuming onto Cresselia, yeah. That's gonna do over 50. Could that be Specs? Or am I, oh, is my Cresselia just not that bulky? I have mentioned it before, I run offensive Cresselia. Uh, quite uninteresting actually, 252, 252. Probably a very bad build to run on Cresselia, but well, I, haven't come, I haven't come up with anything better. I want to double up on that slot, on that Chandelure slot. If it does not have Focus Sash, it will die to a knockoff, and then Psychic will, will do a lot of damage, or maybe even a KO on that um, Roselia. That's the plan, guys. He stays in. He actually lives. It was Choice Scarved, but it will faint to the Psychic, so the Chandelure is gone. Now, the Roselia does have... Or was Rosa Raid, sorry. Um, has, has, does have access to Sleep Powder, but as you saw there, it did miss. That's a big deal. Very, very unfortunate miss for my opponent there. That's a very big deal. He, he needed that to hit. As we do see Landorus come in here. Um, am I really worried about Landorus? I don't think so. Okay, Landorus. I'm going to Ice Punch the Roserade. I'm doubling on the Roserade. I am. If he protects, I'm in trouble, but I don't think he'll have Protect. He does not have Protect. Ice Punch with um, Psychic should KO. Yep. So, best play for him is U-Turn on Cresselia for the KO. Uh, which is what I'm predicting him to go for. It allows, it allows him to shuffle. But he actually goes for knockoff, which uh, does get the knockout. Okay. Uh, he revealed knockoff, which tells me he's most likely not a scarf set. And if he is, he's in trouble. Uh, yeah, Sylveon's the best Pokemon I can bring here. I don't think there's much of a way my opponent can come back from this. As he reveals Greninja to be his last Pokemon. I'm going to knock off the. A little bit in the back. I've got Gashadon. And Gashadon beats Landorus one on one. So that Greninja, I'm going to double up on. With a knockoff Hyper Voice. Even if he protects on the Greninja, if he carries it. I just, I just had so much pressure in this. Uh, he's actually expert belt, so he would have died to that hyper voice regardless. So maybe I should have gone for the ice punch. I just didn't, didn't want to risk the um, focus sash. Uh, as he goes for earthquake, uh, that should not KO either of them. It does not, and that is a good game to my opponent. So two very quick matches here. I think he does go for the fake out hyper voice for the uh, finisher. So the first guy, he was in my mind. Just, he was sitting there taking notes at every play I made. Second guy, second match, he just, he just didn't have much to deal with my team once Trick Room was up. That was, I think, the biggest thing. So, um, I'm not sure if my gut was correct in bringing Sylveon over the Morwal. I guess it was, because he had Landorus, which could Earthquake my Morwal. So, uh, I, ge I guess what we can take away from this is always listen to your gut. Uh, it knows best. So then guys, uh, two very quick matches for you today. I hope you enjoyed them. If you did, remember to give the video a thumbs up. Favorite if favorite if, 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 if. English! How does it work? Favorite the video if you can as well. And if you aren't already subscribed, I do ask you kindly to hit that subscribe button. It really does mean a lot. It helps show support to the channel. It lets me know that what I'm doing is entertaining for you guys. Because if no one liked the video, then you know, I, 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 I wouldn't know that you guys liked or hated it. I don't really put like like goals on my thing, but if we can hit 50 likes, that would be amazing. I'm not, I'm not gonna hide anything behind it, like oh, 50 likes for the next video. Uh, but if we can hit 50 likes, I I will feel happy. I will be a happy Furfro, Ramos, whatever. Um, links or rather 
yeah, I guess links to my social media in the description below. You can also see it at the bottom of the screen. We will see you on Friday, and by we, I mean me. Mm, it's hard to do this live recorded.